So this is the first one we're going to be talking about, and this is the brachypelma albopillosum, or the curly hair that's easier to say for most people. And this is a popular one to start out with. This is what I started out with. We do sell quite a few of those as first-time tarantula, you know, first-time tarantula owners. And they're fairly docile. I mean, they're handleable if, you know, if you want to handle them. I would be cautious with that because, I mean, they can bite. They're easy to set up, but they're more dry. And basically, normally, like, on the more dry or desert species, I'll use, like, three parts sand to one part, like, jungle mix or, or some kind of, like, Eco-earth. Eco-earth, yeah, anything like that, just to be able to, you know, not just straight sand. I mean, it, you can use straight sand, but it, to me it looks a little bit more natural with, you know, some other stuff in there. Yeah, you can, like, go fancy with it and, like, give it different textures. I just usually do dry eco-earth, and that's what I think most people do. Because um, you can kind of make it more humid if you want. So if you want to house it properly, there's a couple different ways. Um, so Exoterras, these are cool, but they're a little bit more pricey. Um, so even though I prefer these, uh, I tend to usually get these. These are a lot less expensive. You can fill these up with cocoa substrate, and all you really need for them is this, and a hide, and a water dish. So they're really easy and inexpensive. Yeah, there's basically very, very little maintenance with them. Like these guys, I spot clean them weekly. You know, I'll pull it, take out dead crickets or if there's still live crickets in there, I'll pull them out. <laughs> and usually I won't feed them that week just in case they're getting ready to go into a molt. And some, some tarantulas, it's really easy to tell when they're going to a molt. The raptor when it turns black, they kind of, especially like this species, they'll lose a little patch of hair and they're basically their skin will turn dark. So usually when they're that way, I don't feed them. Because crickets will eat a tarantula, for sure. Yeah, you have to be careful about feeders, and crickets are like one of the, I, I know people who have lost cricket, or lost tarantulas to crickets. Um, I prefer Nubia roaches, but they burrow, so it's a little annoying. Um, another really good beginner species is the Brachypelma homori. This is like a really popular one. You see it usually on the cover of books about tarantulas. They're very well known in the hobby, um, but they're really docile. They get really big. They have really cool bright orange legs, and they're also really easy to house. They don't need heat. They don't need um, any lighting. You just can do something simple like this and a water dish and they'll be good to go. Yep. So this is a really common one to have as a beginner. It's a rose hair. Um, this is a sling, so it's probably going to be small for years. They grow very slow. But the good thing about it being small now and for quite a while to come is you can house it in just a little deli like this. It's so inexpensive. All you need is dirt and like a thing like this. <laughs> and I, when I feed the slings, I take the small crickets, I pinch the heads and they will they will find them and eat them and it's just um, sometimes you can't find the perfect size for these little spiders like our small crickets they range but it's just easier to pinch a cricket's head and just throw it in there very easy this species is also like pretty dry too so you don't have to worry about humidity for them like pretty much at all just i would like when they're sling i would miss them like maybe like once a week but like you don't really, like they'll be fine on dry substrate. Yeah, that's what we do with these. I just like squirt water in one corner. Mm -hmm. It looks a little dry yeah. just to prevent them from getting stuck in the water. That's what I do too, yeah, it's super easy. So yeah, I mean, get tarantulas. They're very low maintenance. You know, like I said, I maintain these once a week. You could spend 
as much time or as little time as you want. You just don't want to really neglect them um, as far as leaving food in there or not spraying the ones that need to be sprayed more often so they don't get stuck in molds. But we do sell quite a few tarantulas here. You know, all different types from very common beginner to like the, you know, like the higher dollar more spastic tarantulas, mm -hmm. like goody sapphires. Yeah. <laughs> we got a goody sapphire slime. 